want to come by a little later on. Well, what do you want? It's the Rocking Metal Revival! He wants anal. Oh, honey, we can afford to get you that new belt for church. Finish it up! Well, what time does he win? Uh, it's, it's, it's really not like a dentist office here, Edward. You know, he'll just come by when he feels like putting his penis inside an asshole. Welcome to the All right, horns up, metalheads! Time for another edition of Rock and Metal Revival. How you doing, partner? <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you? I'm jazz, man. It's my fucking birthday this weekend. Wow, you're gonna be what? Seventy? Close 75? to seventy? Yeah. Nice. I'm closing. I'm closer to seventy than I am to eighteen. Really? Yep. Is that a good thing? That's a well. I'm. Uh, hey, I didn't think I'd live this long. You, you got the R A R P. I haven't got an ARP card yet, did you? Not yet, no. All right. I change my address constantly so I can't. You're just still getting the hair club for men and the Viagra samples? Yeah, yeah. I Uh I got that thing where they take hair from your ass and put it on your head so you don't know if you should comb it or wipe it. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) All right, today on the show we want to welcome uh, boy rock legend Vinny Apice. No, I see. That's when Apathy. we were going to do the interview. You said it was Vinny Apice, and I were prepared questions no. for Vinny Apice, and it was Apathy. Yeah. So I had no clue what we were going to talk that's about. That's why you didn't have anything to say. Yeah, we'll talk to Vinny next hour. <laughs> uh, he's got a new album out with his brother Carmine it's Apice. Called, it's called a piece and Apathy. Called Drum Wars. <laughs> so, uh, since it was my uh, my birthday weekend, I just picked songs that I liked. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so we're going to fucking have to listen to what? Chris um, Robinson's freaking... Uh, oh, Chris Robinson Crow, Brotherhood. Black Crows. No, we're not going to play any of that. No. no. Johnny Cash. Got some Johnny Cash in no, there. No, but how about some... Let's kick it off with Little Priest. Little Priest. From Screaming is for... That, is that like one of them rappers? Like exactly. Little, John, little Priest, yeah. Little, hey. little Wayne. Little Priest. Here's scre- <laughs> oh, from the, shit. From nope, the we CDs. didn't start <laughs> something. <laughs> Screaming for Vengeance. <laughs> Here's Devil's Child on Rock and Metal Revival. Watch out for the Little Priest. Give you a little devil. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Metal God, with Red and Jerry's Rockin' Metal Revival Internet Radio Show. Turn it way up. There's brand new music from Silver Tongue called Never Too Late on Rockin' Metal Revival. And uh, we yeah. had them on the show last year, early in the year, and uh, I kind of dug that out. Yeah. Not bad stuff at all, man. You're hearing new music here first. Yeah, they sent it to you exclusively, That's didn't right. they? Yep, it wasn't released until Wednesday. So, uh, Wow. Nice. Yeah, can't so, beat that. Uh, that's why we do this. That's why we do this, exactly. So got the big weekend coming up, buddy. You ready to party? Uh, Yeah, you know me. I'm a party animal. I'm ready. Yeah? Yep, I got my... I'm going to wear my Steel Panther thong. Are you? Yeah. That's it. Because it's going to be warm. It's going to be like an almost 40 almost degrees. Almost 40 degrees. It's going to be crazy. For, exactly. Usually on your birthday, it's snow and cold than, as hell. Yeah, it's usually sub-zero. Shit. Yeah. And that'd be interesting. Corey's coming down from Uncontrolled Noise. Oh, we're, that's cool. We're going to party with him. So, Corey, if you need to find me, I'm the guy. I'm the one in the Steel Panther thong. Yep. Yeah. You'll be able to see him <laughs> real easy. Yeah. <laughs> not sure what Red's going to be wearing. Hopefully, it's not his birthday, birthday suit. suit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we get to see our buddy Andy. Oh yeah, Andy's yeah, I haven't seen be Andy there. in a while. Andy's playing, and uh, the band Waylon playing uh, an unplugged gig. And we're so they still the unplugged. They say they're still going to be unplugged, or oh, they're, I, I, they're probably going to want to fucking plug in and say use Andy's rigs and stuff, use so? their amps and stuff. Never know. Never know. You never know what's going to happen. Instead of having to play acoustic all night, yeah, yeah, electric guitar is a hell of a lot easier than playing that in acoustic. <laughs> that's just that's just a fact. So, um, yeah, 2015. And wah wahs don't sound good on an acoustic. No, not at you all. Know? You know. No, not at all. <laughs> so, 2015's off to a good start, but we got some uh, cool guests coming up. Uh, next weekend, uh, our friends in Saints of Rebellion are going to take over Rock and Metal Revival. Oh, no, really? Yeah, yeah they said, hey, can we take over your show? That- I said, does that mean Jerry and I get the week off? Does that mean I'm going to have... Are they going to, like, trash the place? I hope some not. Some rock stars, you know who they are. The, Frickin' Veronica left the place a mess. I know. But it Veron- it smelled good. It smelled so. good, yeah. Yeah. But these are guys. Yeah, I know. It's going to... St- I'm going to have to fumigate and everything, mm-hmm. man. That one guy, he's going to poke holes in my ceiling if he jumps, because he's got that, that frickin' mohawk. Mohawk like Jay, yeah. 600 feet tall, man. So, uh, yeah. That'll be interesting. And then after that, we've got a Key St. John coming up from... Uh, from the band Burning Rain is going to join us. Cool. And uh, also uh, 
It looks like we might have uh, one of your favorite singers of all time, the guy you have the poster over your bed of. Vince Neil? Udo. Udo. Yeah. Oh, Udo, he's so hot. He's cute. He's one of the cutest singers out there. Yeah. He's like the John Bon Jovi of German. I know. That's what Kim said. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right. So let's get back to the music. Uh, what do you want to hear, bud? You got anything in particular you want to play off this? Uh, did I throw anything on here? It's your, uh, rated X tune. Oh. Want to play some Rated X? Yeah, this right. has got the nice, cool uh, fretless bass intro. I dig this one. All right, this is uh, Fire and Ice from Rated X on Rock and Metal Revival. There's Metallica and Disposable Heroes on Rock and Metal Revival, and uh, boy, it's bud, a nice love song. It is. It's uh, pleasant. It, it is it's, very pleasant. I'm wonder, when are they going to do lullaby songs for them? I don't know. That, that one would be a great lullaby. You think so? Yeah, yeah. I think it might work. Back to the front. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got time. Uh, it's time now for News of the Weird. Oh, and uh, I read this one the other day. I couldn't believe it myself. Carolyn Castle has been arrested for allegedly driving drunk after drinking vanilla extract. That's awesome. I didn't know you could get drunk on vanilla. I didn't know. Accused drunk driver who allegedly blew a .26 on her breathalyzer told authorities she had been drinking vanilla extract before her <laughs> arrest. Nice. And she was man. seen driving erratically around the Walmart parking lot out there in New York. <laughs> She told police she drank two hand-sized bottles of pure vanilla extract in Lyons and became uh, you know, oh became God. lost and could not find her way out of the Walmart parking lot. <laughs> oh, shit, man. So you can get drunk on vanilla extract, huh? Yeah, it says the alcohol level in vanilla extract is listed at 41%. Holy shit. That's, like, that's pretty strong. Yeah. Man. Wow. Is there anything else you can get drunk on? Um, I don't Well, It just says it smells like a vanilla drink, like vanilla Coke or Pepsi. Ah, wow. nice. So uh, that's that's kind of cool. Uh, there's a public service in for all yeah for, for you. all you alcoholics out there. Yeah, who can't afford, if you, yeah, you want to get yeah. drunk, man, go get some vanilla extract. And then when they ch- smell your breath, it's like, hey, you're just blowing some vanilla guy. Uh, yeah, I was just eating. I was just uh, drinking vanilla Pepsi. Yeah, yeah. Me. All right, uh, <laughs> shovel beats gun in strip club showdown. Never bring a gun to a shovel fight, Jerry. I've told you this numerous times. Man, I. I know. I Sometimes I forget to bring the shovels. I usually use a rake. Two men were uh, able to fend off uh, a gunman with shovels. <laughs> nice. Trying to rob them around 2 a.m. Uh, Friday uh, in Bayport, in Hudson, Florida. Hudson, Florida figures. Yeah. Well, you know, in what do you Florida, do with a shovel in Florida? You usually carry around. Everybody carries a shovel around in Florida. Burying you never know somebody, when you yeah. have to bury somebody. You know, there's bodies everywhere. So you just roll up and bury somebody, and you know it helps to have. This is the best part. Uh, guys are sitting in there. Uh, the deputy said the 22 year old uh, Jonathan Crespo fired five shots from a handgun into the vehicle's window. Dang! Yeah, uh, Alopen uh, was struck three times. He then got out of his truck, grabbed Crespo, who had uh, allegedly demanded Alpina hand over his belongings. According to a uh, watcher, uh, what was a bystander said he didn't want to be identified and ran over and handed him a shovel. <laughs> nice. Crespo then hit him with it over or no Alpino actually hit Crespo over and over with it. Nice. Con- and just continued beating the robber. <laughs> <laughs> Both Crespo and Alpino were treated for non-life-threatening injuries at the hospital. According to the Tampa Tribune, Crespo is charged with armed robbery and attempted murder. Wow. Man, he needs to be... He needs. you got to be a better shot if you're going to be trying to take out someone who has a shovel. Don't mess you with know? the guy with a shovel. Yeah. yeah. Nine-year-old slapped with warrant over stolen gum. Oh, man. Where the hell is that? Idaho. An Shit. Idaho prosecutor... they got nothing better to no. do in Idaho than bust kids for and, stealing... And watch potatoes grow. Yeah. Prosecutor wow. issued a warrant for a nine-year-old who failed to show up in court. <laughs> Fucker. What? He couldn't get his car started? No, he just decided <laughs> he, didn't want, he didn't want to miss school, I don't think. Man, that's messed that's up. Terrible. How do you fucking arrest a nine-year-old and make him come to court? For stealing gum. Gum. How much gum? A pack of gum? Doesn't say. Or a truck worth of gum. Yeah. Maybe if he hijacked a freaking Wrigley's Spearmint truck, that might be worth... You know, he might be a lifelong fucking metal criminal, but <laughs> Jesus Christ, nine years old, huh? Yeah, let's go. Hey, what do you say we go back to Florida? Oh, sure. Florida couple allegedly caught getting freak nasty on at a Kia dealership. 
Oh, nice. Uh, sex on a car is a common fantasy. You ever had that fantasy, or have you ever fulfilled it? Or Oh, uh, not recently, no. No? Okay. Uh, but a Florida couple turned it up a notch. In a car, back in the teen years. Yeah, when they decided to get down at Mike's Auto Sales. Everybody does that at Mike's Auto Sales. Yeah, That's in t- their commercials. On a two- Come on down and on. get the fucking of your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fuck you one way or another. another. <laughs> A witness called the cops about 3 a.m. Monday to report a naked couple having sex on the top of a 2004 Kia Sedona. Well, they are roomy. They do yeah. have a roomy hood. <laughs> that guy might have been tall, though. You know, he couldn't get in the back seat. Oh, that's true. The caller said he could hear moaning coming from the dealership parking lot, so he investigated. The couple reported he saw him and started yelling at him. Hey, quit looking at us. We're fucking. <laughs> the girl was 18. The guy was 29. Oh, jeez, guy. Yeah. Man, that's not cool. No. Then, well, she's 18. So Good for that's him. Okay, but yeah. all right. What the hell. Tom Chen creates <laughs> devices. Do you do you have to like if someone's been killed in a house, they have to report that when they're selling the house. If, when they're selling that car, do they have to report that there might be Swooge DNA on it? Yeah. DNA on DNA it. On it. <laughs> There's been. Yeah. All right. Tom Chen creates device says he can strengthen vagina muscles with video games. Oh, listen nice. up, ladies. Oh, this... Tom Chen is a man on a mission. He wants to improve the vaginal muscles of women via video games. Oh, yeah. Um, the Smart Kegel Exercise Aid is coming out next month. Oh, nice. The game's called Seca. Okay. The Seca fits into the woman's vag and allows her to play video games hand free by just tightening her Kegel muscles. Nice. The pelvic floor muscles that support the uterus, bladder, intest- the small intestine, and her rectum. So where's this guy from? Japan. Oh, figures. You yeah. Know, you got to have want them girls to tight muscles That's there. That's right. Yeah. That little penis. <laughs> All right. And then uh, don't man. say that, man. You we got lots of Japanese listeners. Okay. And then that. parents claim son masturbated himself to death. They sue the sperm bank. <laughs> a Chinese family sued a local sperm bank. Someone un- somewhat unsuccessfully claiming their donor son masturbated himself to death, making deposits. <laughs> <laughs> oh man give this guy a drink <laughs> oh my god i bet he was blind too yeah yeah he couldn't see it. four visits in a week he actually walked into an empty elevator shaft <laughs> the young man is survived by an estimated twelve thousand three hundred forty seven babies his sperm have thought to create it across china jeez really yeah wow man, well wait. i guess that's one way to get out of child support payments <laughs> Oh, Michael Schenker. Oh, hey. man. <laughs> You're bad. I was waiting for that. All right, let's get back to the music. Let's go old school. How about some Van Halen? Sounds like a plan. All right, coming up, we got uh, Talking Real Metal. Yeah, that comes up in a little bit. Right right now, let's go, like I said, back to some old Van Halen. And don't get that thing out of your hand and kill yourself. <laughs> Here's your latest hard rock and metal news on Rock and Metal Revival. All right, metalheads, it's time to talk real metal. News you can't use. Gather around the water cooler, and here we go. Okay. Kisses Paul Stanley says social media is a great thing when used properly. Yeah, for porn and... That's about it. Sending naked pictures of yourself uh, oh, to everybody. By the way, I did see that last Instagram. Nice. Oh, you're welcome. I thought you'd like that. Yep. Yeah. Marty Freeman on rejoining <laughs> Megadeth. I wouldn't rule it out, but I wouldn't get your hopes up either. Yeah, yeah. So that's a yes that or says, no. If I get an equal share, I'll come back. If I don't, go fuck yourself. Yeah, if it's yeah. if it's all Dave's show still, yeah. no. No, I don't want nothing to do with that. Motley Crue's Nikki Six said he probably would decline Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. I'm He's telling so you what, full of shit. if Motley Crue gets in there before bands like Deep Purple and Cheap Trick... And they need to burn the place burn down. Burn the place down, yeah. Because that's, that's just wrong. Wrong. Man. Jeez. Megadeth Dave Ellison still considers Sean Drover and Chris Broderick to be his friends. Uh oh, you're gonna get kicked out of the band. Too, yeah, then. watch it, Dave. You can don't, be next. Yeah, don't let him, you stay in here. That yeah. man, he'll get rid of you too. Joe Elliott, lots of bass players out there. Here's Red's a, practicing. Yeah, I'm He's practicing ready. right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably all the way up to Van Halen level. Oh, all shit. right, Joe Elliott on the next Def Leppard album. It is uh, very much in the classic rock mold, but it is not stale and sterile. Those guys are so old, they got to be stale and sterile. Yeah, come on. You know they're sterile, for one. Well, when Vivian Campbell comes out and says, if this next Def Leppard album doesn't rock, don't blame me. If it's wimpy, don't blame me. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, one of Jerry's pinup girls, Sharon Osborne, says she felt terrible about uh, slamming you two over album giveaway. Yeah, she says that after she meets him. Yeah, and, she must, and they're like, "What the fuck is your problem, bitch?" Yeah. And she's like, "Oh, I felt terrible for saying yeah. that." Well, then why'd you say? Because she's, she's a crotch. Yeah. All right, it's official. ACDC to perform at the Grammy Awards. Uh, you know that's great, but nobody watches the Grammys yeah. anymore, uh, unless you're 14. And one one thing I want to say about award show: uh, this was the ninth straight year that Jerry and I did not win a People's Choice Award. <sighs> we're getting we're getting good at this. Yeah, man. nine yeah. straight we years got this in a row. Shit down. Yeah. Ozzy Osbourne, Hell's, or Hell Gate will be a month-long uh, state-of-the-art interactive show in Vegas. Ah, so you going? Going to go stay in Vegas for a month? To, I haven't been to Vegas. I should go to Vegas. I haven't been there in a long time. Quiet Riot documentary to air on Showtime will be made available on iTunes. DVD will air January 29th. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch that, man. I got Showtime. What's this guy's name? Serge Tankin? I don't uh, know. Tom either. Morello, Chuck Billy, Alexi Lajo, uh, Rudy Sarzo featured on Randy Rhodes' tribute album. See, I can go without that first guy. He's he's the one from that one fucking band. He sings a weird... System of the Down. Yeah, they suck, yeah. and he sucks, and I'm, I'm not looking forward to hearing him singing. Have Ozzy you seen Tim, that but... uh, Physical Graffiti's coming out on vinyl? Ooh, all I might remastered. have to get yeah. that. Jimmy Page says Led Zeppelin remasters trump all the original albums. I might have to do get some of those, but they're expensive as hell, man. Yeah. Except Wolf Hoffman, we wrote the first speed metal song ever. Uh huh. Okay. Fast as a shark. Yep. <laughs> ACDC's <laughs> Malcolm Young underwent surgery for lung cancer after a Black Eyes tour. Wow. Wow. I had no more idea. Thing. Uh, yeah. Graham Bonnet is launching a new band. You know who he is, right? Yeah, he's a singer from Rainbow. Yeah. And Alcatraz. And, and Michael Shanker group. Yeah. He was on with the one good, one good album yeah. that he did with Michael Shanker, that uh, Assault Attack. Oh, that is a great, great album. album. And last but not least, our girlfriend and the girl we want on this show more than any, uh, Lizzie Hale and Hailstorm. Nice. To release Into the Wildlife album in April. And Jerry has... I've, new music. Yes, I pre-ordered it. I pre-ordered the album. All right, it's called. That's uh, what a fanboy I am. Yeah, into the wildlife. This song is called Apocalypt. Apocalyptic. Yep. Sounds like fun. Sounds, sounds like, like fun. It's probably a ballad. It is. Crank it. Know? Let's that crank it up though. Ballady. You know? I'd love to hear it. Okay. All right. Here it is. Brand new music from Hailstorm. Exclusive. You're hearing it first. Exclusive. Right first here. time play. First time play here on Rock and Metal <laughs> Revival. <laughs> This portion of Rocket Metal Revival is brought to you by... Hey, Nancy Kerrigan. Hey. You an official here? Because you have officially given me a boner. I'm a sex addict. It's my cross to bear. It, it's a real disease with, uh, with doctors and medicine and everything. From the D.O. years, there's Black Sabbath and the mob rules on Rocket Metal Revival. A little taste of uh, our next guest, buddy. Who's that? Vinny Apice. Oh, and I thought it was Vinny Apice. No, Vinny Apice. Mm. But uh, before that, you heard his uh, last band that he was in, Kill Devil Hill. But yeah. uh, he's got a lot of things going on. He's got the Dio thing going on right now. And uh, he's got. Yeah, this, well, not Dio. It's, it's what called is it? Last, last in Line. In line yeah. yeah, with Vivian Campbell. With the Dio band. Yeah. Yeah. That and then be cool. uh, he's got uh, also this new project called Drum Wars where he's with his. Uh, yeah, his, his brother. brother. Carmine. Apice. Apice. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> But <laughs> uh, it, it's great to have Vinny on the show. I mean, uh, I learned a lot about him in the last week or so. Never knew, oh, yeah. Never knew he worked with John Lennon. Yeah, yeah that's we'll have to find cool. out we'll about talk that. talk about that. I and, had uh, no idea either. Yeah, so we're going to talk to Vinny Apice coming up right now. This is from the CD. I'm not. I'm talking to Vinny Apice. Okay. This is from Drum Wars. <laughs> He's Carmine's brother. <laughs> How much did you smoke today? Jesus. I didn't smoke anything yeah. yet, man. But this is called Maybe that's my problem. Stand Up and Shout from the CD Drum Wars on Rock and Metal Revival. From the CD Drum Wars, there is Stand Up and Shout on Rock and Metal Revival. And Jerry, a very drum heavy. I like it. Yeah. I seriously, like yeah. it. I like it. I like it. And Good on stuff. the phone with us, we are honored to have with us Vinny Apice. How you doing, Vinny? I'm doing good. Thanks. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Vinny, I just got to ask you, I mean, uh, what's it like to sit down and, and play the dual drums with your brother? You know what? This is one of the best things in my whole career, you know, looking over and seeing Carmine there, and we're playing together finally, and uh, it's a really, really cool feeling for me, you know, and I'm sure it is for him too. So uh, we're having a ball doing this. Now, was this, was this the first time you two that have ever recorded together? 
Actually, it is. I think I played some Tom Tom overdubs on his solo record from years back, somewhere in the 80s, and that's about it. But this is the first time we actually released something with both of us on there, you know. And uh, hopefully we can do some, some future stuff where we go in the studio and uh, write a couple songs together and and really hone in on, uh, you know, some some cool drum parts and stuff. So are you going to be doing some touring with this, or...? Are you yeah, we're doing we're doing some dates in February that uh, it looks like are on the East Coast in uh, upstate New York, and uh, we 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 try to do some dates every month or two, and uh, you know it's not like a one long tour, but we're yeah. doing a lot of flyouts and uh, and keep this going. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it seems to me like it, it would be a no-brainer to get you guys together on the on the same record, but this had to be a project that's been in the works for a while, hasn't it? I mean, because you both got pretty busy schedules. Yeah, back in the 90s, we did some drum clinics together, and that was the first time we did that, and the response was incredible. So after that, we said, you know, you know we should do something together. It would be great, but we were both busy. We never got to it, and then about three years ago, you know, we said, let's do this finally, you know, and put it together. So we started out as doing a couple of drum clinics, and then that went over well. And then we thought, well, we want to be able to play more with this rather than drum clinics. So let's put together more of a show. So we got the band, you know, and then we chose the songs to play. And uh, so we incorporated, you know, the songs from our histories, from the bands we've been in, and then a couple of drum duets couple of drum solos and then uh, battles and made it work so, and we even wrote a song that's on the on the cd called drum wars and that's on the album it's a cool little anthem song so uh we put the show together and then as we kept playing and playing as any band would do it gets better and better and we know what works and what doesn't work so uh it's really smooth now it seems to really work and turn into a high energy rock show really cool show something different so who's all in the band besides your brother? Well, there's different bands we use. Uh, sometimes in L.A. it was uh, the last band was Phil Susan on bass. He played with Ozzy and then uh, Rowan Robinson on guitar, nice. uh, who played with Dio actually. And uh, the singer's this uh, friend of ours, Jim Crean. He's from uh, Buffalo, New York. He's on vocals, so he does most of the vocals. And then in different parts of the country, we have different people we contact for the band. And they they know the songs, and we rehearse, and then we we do it like that. Okay, well, you know, over the years, you know, Vinny, I've seen you play with uh, with Black Sabbath and with Dio, and and we saw you here Kill with Hill. Kill Devil Hill, and I can tell when you're drumming on this CD because, I've, like I said, I followed your career. What's the difference in the drumming between you and your brother? I mean, I mean, your style wise. Well, style wise, uh, Carmine plays. Why we always compare it to more, he's more like Gene Krupa, I'm more like Buddy Rich, I like the speed and the fast things. Uh, so I play a lot, you know, I've been playing all the heavy stuff all my life, so I'm a lot of harder hit or louder and and more, uh, definitely louder in volume, you know, than Carmine. And uh, Carmine's played more of melodic mm -hmm. stuff in his career. You know, he's done more ballads. I don't think I've ever really played a ballad on stage. <laughs> no, I, that's a good point <laughs> yeah yeah call my favorite rod stewart that's a lot more melodic stuff than you know stuff i played so uh and then tuning wise we tune the drums different he seems to tune his drums a lot deeper like his tom tom's a little looser than mine uh he uses double bass i use single bass and the tuning's different his snare drums a little lower being that i hit and i like speed you get more speed when the drum heads are tighter. So my snare drum's a little higher tuned. My toms are higher tuned. I'm only one bass drum. So there's a different sound, too. So mm -hmm. it's interesting. But then yet, we'll both play things the same. Mm -hmm. There's certain things that is like, it sounds like the same drummer, you know? So, so uh, it's very interesting. Did you drive your mom crazy when you guys were growing up having two drummers in the house? Yeah, but luckily, call my... Was, he was gone. He's by older then. than I am. Yeah, he was gone. So they went through him, <laughs> and then the bands were rehearsing in the house. Then, then I started, and you know, I got the bands in the basement. We we're playing and stuff. So 
But it made it easier for me because Carmine was successful. So it <laughs> yeah. was easier for me to uh, pursue a career in music, being that parents come to Carmine and go, well, he's done well, you know, so Vinny's got, you know, a good shot at this too. So it uh, made it a lot more easier for me to do my, my thing, you know. You know, Vinny, t- I was talking to somebody today telling them that we were going to have you on the show, and, and he goes, oh, I saw him with Dio, and I saw him with Sabbath, and I said, did you know he played with John Lennon? And a lot of people kind of look at me strange when when I tell them that you that you played with John Lennon at one time. Yeah, because they don't associate. They know me from Black Sabbath and Dio mm-hmm. and heavy music. And like, well, what was he doing with John Lennon? So <laughs> yeah. uh, what what happened was, when I was like 16, 15, 16, I had a band in, in New York, Brooklyn, New York. And a uh, friend of the guitar players was Jimmy Iovine. And Jimmy was producing John at the Record Plant Studios in New York. And Jimmy liked the band, so he wanted to produce us. So he brought us in to do some demos in the studio. And then uh, the owner of the Record Plant Studios, Roy, liked the band, signed us to a management deal. Gave us a rehearsal room in the Record Plant uh for us we just had our own free room it was um, unbelievable really nice so uh we'd rehearse every night and then uh we'd be there and one night jimmy called and said uh can you guys come down and do hand claps on a song so we went down and it was john lennon and we're all shitting you know going, oh my god look john lennon we hear him over the headphones you know going okay we're gonna take a full verse <laughs> you know, it's fucking amazing so we did hand claps on that song whatever gets you through the night that's me and my band nice. and then, uh, a little right. later on uh, a couple of days later we were rehearsing and John walks in our rehearsal place so Jimmy told him we're upstairs so he came hang out with us he liked the band and uh, we started playing pool with him and we, we became you know like sort of friends with him and then he asked us to do a live gig with him. So we did this gig in New York City at the Hilton Hotel. It was a live TV broadcast around the world. Wow. And uh, we played three songs with him, went on with these crazy outfits and stuff. And uh, that was his last live appearance ever. Whoa. Unbelievable. Yeah, so I, was, I actually did his last live show. And then he went on to do three videos and at the record plant for his own stuff. And we were the band. So I'm in it. I'm in one of them for a couple of seconds, but I was in there for all three. And then he produced uh, a singer friend of his. This, this chick was the owner's wife of the record plant. And we were the band, so we worked with him as a producer, too. So it was pretty amazing. And I was like 16, you know, working with John Lennon. Wow. That's nuts. That's I unbelievable. No idea. Yeah. And, That's uh, cool. you know, the other... And co- I, ne- I never asked him for a picture, you know, like a fan. Like, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I think, you know, I just treated it as... Because at that point... You know, I was around my brother, I was around famous people, so I was cool. Like one mm-hmm. time, Carmine brought Jeff Beck over the house in Brooklyn, my mother's house, to eat wow. Italian food on the Sundays, and Carmine said, you know, don't tell your friends, and so it's real cool. You know, hi, Jeff, hey, we just ate like normal people and never treated, never acted like a fan in any of the things I did. So I unfortunately didn't take a lot of pictures, <laughs> or any with John, but yeah. I found some pictures. So. Very cool. Well, you know, one of the questions I've wanted to ask you since we found out we were going to do this was um, when Black Sabbath got back together, and it was pretty pretty evident that Bill Ward was not going to be playing drums with Black Sabbath, what was the reason behind you not sitting behind the kit? I mean, it seemed like a no-brainer to me. Um, so I thought I would rather sit home and uh, <laughs> there was new stuff on TV and stuff, you know? <laughs> I, I just never understood that video. I, I, just... I, was, I, was, I was listening to uh, Rock and Metal Revival on the radio. I didn't, you, know. <laughs> you didn't have time you didn't to have go time. You didn't have time to do the Sabbath thing? I don't blame I, you. I have time for this stuff. You know, I might miss some. <laughs> yeah. so, it, it was not up to, it wasn't, uh, you know, they, they were produced by Rick Rubin, and I don't know Rick, so I think he was more in charge of who's, going to play drums on it unless they worked it out with bill so i'm not sure what happened but i never received a call or anything uh and you know saying hey would you want to come do this you know Mm -hmm. so uh, it might also have been you know i just did all the years with heaven and hell so if i came back it would be heaven and hell and ozzy yeah Yeah. and then ozzy wouldn't know what band he was in (laughs) i don't think he does now (laughs) yeah uh, heaven and hell, uh, Black Sabbath. 
So we saw you with uh, with Heaven and Hell and with Black Sabbath, and you got the drums going up the sides, those big toms going up the like up over yeah. your heads. And who came? When did you come up with that? And were you looking for rotator cuff problems? <laughs> No, but I got them. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard you needed rotator cuff surgery, that's the first thing I thought. Yeah. Wow, hitting those things up <laughs> above your head, that would hurt after yeah. a while. Well, what happened a long time ago when I first joined Sabbath, 1980, I went down to play with the band, uh, mainly as an audition, and I brought my little Ludwig set in my Mustang. No cases, <laughs> it was a little set, four toms, concert toms, which were even smaller. And one bass drum. So I set up and we played, and Tony and everybody liked it. And then Tony said, can you make the set? Can you play double bass? He wanted a bigger drum set. Uh So I went, no, but, you know, I could add some stuff. So at that point, I added another floor tom on the left, and I I saw these big toms on stands. I said, let me get some of those, and those were the first aerial toms, you know. So I had Mm -hmm. two big ones on the side and then the extra floor and another tom up front. So the set got bigger. So mainly Tony started me off with this. And then I kept adding drums and adding drums and making them, basically adding them in the air. So I had, you know, four. And then on the last Heaven and Hell tour, I had, uh, I think, 10 or 12 drums up in the air, not even mm-hmm. including on the floor. And, yeah, uh, there were drums behind me. So I was playing, hitting those drums all facing forward and hitting behind me. And it really screwed my right shoulder up when uh, I came off the tour. Man, I couldn't even move my arm, you know. Oof. Yeah. So I've been at there. that point, at that point, you know, before we went on stage, me, Ronnie, and Tony were on one side of the stage before while the intro tapes playing, and Geezer always went on on the other side. And we're going. I'm t- Ronnie saying his, you know, his, he had stomach pains was, yeah, you because know, he was getting sick, and yeah. then Tony had, you know, some some problems with his. Uh, uh, you know, tendonitis, and and I had the shoulder thing, and we just complain right before we go on. Go, oh, my shoulder, my stomach, my my hand, and then we go up and just kill it. <laughs> yeah, you know exactly. So on this on this new album, I noticed there's not a lot of cowbell. Is there a reason for that? <laughs> we we put it in there, but I don't know. You can't hear it, so I, we kept I, saying more cowbell. Yeah, they didn't I know. Listen. That's what I yep. was thinking. This this album just needs a little bit more cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> well, you must have a fever. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> and only more cowbell can quench that. That's that it. <laughs> well, well, Vinny, I uh, you know it's it seems like it's been uh, forever since we got to see you out uh, on on tour. Anything else going on uh, besides the drum war project that you're working on right now? Yeah, actually just finishing up a, a Dio record with the original Dio band, Vivian oh, Campbell man. and uh, Jimmy Vane on bass. The singer's uh, Andy Freeman. He sings in a show called The Rock Vault in Vegas. Great mm-hmm. singer. Cool. And uh, we wrote songs, and we're just finishing up the last uh, vocals uh, next week. And uh, we've done gigs, and, and people have gone crazy, you know, seeing the band. The band's playing great together. It's a lot of fun. And we play all the Holy Diver, Last in Line stuff, and uh, nice. so so this the, the new album came out great. We got a deal on Frontier Records. And, Very cool. Uh, it's coming out great. So it's going to be a record that'll come out probably toward uh, fall, and then we hope to tour after that, and then uh, uh, concentrate on that. So I'm doing that, and then uh, doing a Metal All Star tour in the summer with with Carmine. Uh, it's a bunch of guys, old metal guys. You can check that out, Metal All Stars, and uh, just a lot of stuff going on, you know. So does uh, Vivian Campbell got his uh, metal chops back from his time in Def Leppard? Dude, Leopard? he is ripping it up. Nice. You hear some of these solos, you know. I played it for some guitar players, you know, and they're like, "Yeah, that's the old Viv." Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Yeah, he's smoking on it. Awesome. He's smoking. Well, if people want to well, keep. He, a- well, go ahead. He could let it rip on this. This is their own thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, Vinny, if people want to keep up to date with what's going on with you, uh, what's the best places to keep in touch? Uh, you can go to my website, just my name, Vinny with a Y dot com, and then there's drumwars and dot com. And uh, the name of the Theo thing is called The Last in Line. There's a mm-hmm. Facebook page. There's a, there's a web page up there, too, there's, you know, and uh, it'll keep you updated on all this stuff. 
Sweet. Well, we appreciate you taking some time out to be on Rock and Metal Revival, and uh, we're going to play another one off Drum Wars. This is uh, the Dio Classic, Holy Diver. And, Vinny, we appreciate your time today on Rock and Metal Revival. Oh, nice to be here. Thanks for having me on, and hope to see you guys soon. Where, what area are you guys in? We're in Wisconsin. Oh, okay. It's nice and warm there. Probably, oh, it's right? beautiful. Yeah, we're, it's, yeah. it's, we're, we're sitting our, outside right now. Yeah. In our thongs. Yeah. <laughs> they sitting outside doing this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Great. Hey, people, it's the V, Veronica Freeman of Benedictum. And I'm here to remind you that Red and Jerry are not entertaining, nor are they in any way informative. So thanks for listening to Rock and Metal Revival. There's new music from Udo. That's uh, from the CD Decadent. It's called House of Fake on Rock and Metal Revival. I but like don't that. tell anybody yeah. you heard it. I like that tune, dude. Yeah, I like that album, man. Yeah. And I'm digging it yeah. so far. Great album coming out real soon. We're going to have Udo on the show coming up. So Yeah, I'll believe it when I hear it. Trust me. I don't believe it. I don't trust you, man. Right. You said that I've trusted you before and, yeah. and been screwed. By who? By you. By what's by what guest? Oh, I don't know. I'm just messing with you. Oh, okay. I just figured I'd give you some shit. All Your right. Birthday's coming up. Yep, and that's what I'm doing. I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'm going to start no. drinking Jim Beam right now. Really? You're yep. going to be like totally hammered. Dude, I'm just going to go get a couple bottles of vanilla. Vanilla <laughs> extract. You're just getting it. Yeah. Chug right. on the man. There was some other things at the bottom of that. There's other things that you can get drunk on. There's, yeah, sure. Mouthwash and there's tons no. Of there was some other extracts or shit at the bottom of that thing that you could get drunk on. I'm serious. Like the last pure one. lemon extract, peppermint extract, eighty nine percent alcohol, peppermint. Holy shit, peppermint pure, extract. And pure your lemon breath, is eighty three, and your breath will smell wonderful. Yep, there wow. you go. Wow, your there burps you will be great, and you'll be fucking slammed. Exactly. Wow. So well, there's there's some information that you're not going to get anywhere right. else. To the people in uh, <laughs> Kentucky, you're probably going to get Monday off after all the bourbon I'm going to consume this weekend. Oh yeah. So yeah. Well, that'll be fun. I'm probably, I might have a few drinks. All right, I'm never get, now. I'm getting the hell on out of here. Really? Uh, next week, Sons of or Saints of a Rebellion going to take over the show. All and, right. Uh, so Jerry and I are taking the week off. Yeah, because we're going to need it to recoup. Exactly. After that, after and the, the Packer, alcohol poisoning. and the Packer victory yep, dance that we'll be go. doing. Yeah. And sorry, sorry, the people in Dallas. Sorry. It's, yeah, to all our Z Rock listeners, we apologize. Yeah, we didn't have nothing to do. I, with I the, thought he caught the ball too. Even if he did, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't catch it. So even, next time. even if they gave it to him, Rodgers was on fire. He was going to come back and score two more touchdowns in that four minutes. So you, you had no chance. <laughs> I'm getting the hell out of here. Till uh, next week. All or they had two to weeks do from is, now. What? Yeah, nah, nothing. I won't. I won't go into. I'm not it, getting but, on this Packers shit. So Packers uh, are awesome, and that's all we got to say. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, you'll be listening to Jerry's All Packer Prod Podcast. I should start a Packer you Podcast. You yeah. should. All Packers, all the time. Excellent. No other team. I'm out of here. All right. Peace. You're a Packer fan. I am, but I don't, you know. Well, I just got to figure I rub it in while they're doing good. Because when they suck, then nobody, I won't want to say anything, right? I'll give everybody Jerry's email when they start to suck. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can just rag on me. All right, we're out of here. What do you want to play? You don't care? I don't care. I'm out of here. See ya. All right. I'll play something. This brings to an end another edition of Rock and Metal Revival. If you enjoyed it, tell a friend. If you didn't, tell two. Until next time, this is Rock and Metal Revival. you shit-faced cockmasters. Wow. To catch the whole show of Rock and Metal Revival, all you have to do is check it out on these affiliates. Mega Rock Radios on Saturdays from 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Rock 101 KLOL on Saturdays 11 p.m. Eastern on Z-Rock 106.9 KKZR Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and on Uncontrolled Noise Tuesdays at 1 a.m., Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and on Saturday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern on UncontrolledNoise.com. And make sure that you leave them a message and tell them that you found Rock and Metal Revival on their stations. Enjoy this edition of Rock and Metal Revival.